Dear Chairman, thank you for the invitation to present at the EBC 2020 meeting. The title of my presentation is Low Contrast IVAS Guided Decay Crush of the Left Main Stem. No conflicts of interest. Just a bit about the case. This is an 82-year-old gentleman who normally lives alone and manages independently. He was admitted with a end STEMI to our hospital. He has multiple comorbidities, including hypertension, peripheral vascular disease, chronic kidney disease stage 4, with a baseline creatinine of 260, type 2 diabetes, and moderate left ventricular systolic dysfunction. Coronary angiography was undertaken using 14 mils of contrast, which showed calcified coronary arteries with severe disease in the distal left main, LAD, and circumflex arteries. A decision was made to stop at that stage and to discuss him at the heart team meeting. Now, while he was awaiting heart team discussion, he had further episodes of chest pain and his EGFR went down to 14. The heart team decision was that he was not a candidate for CABG and if feasible, he could be considered for high risk PCI, but otherwise the mainstay of treatment would be medical management. So here we had a dilemma. We have a gentleman with severe renal impairment who is not a surgical candidate and is having recurrent episodes of chest pain with dynamic ECG changes. Here at the Lancashire Cardiac Centre in Blackpool, UK, we've uh, built a good experience of doing ultra-low contrast PCI in complex anatomy. And after careful consideration, we decided to take on this gentleman for ultra-low contrast high-risk PCI to the left main LAD and circumflex arteries. So we have a number of lesions to tackle and our strategy was that we would go seven French femoral. We would use exactly the same angles as the angiogram. We would engage the guide and wire the vessels using tactile feel and calcium for guidance. We would co-register the IVAS using the wire as a roadmap and not a contrast angiogram. We were also prepared that we might need to use rotational atherectomy and our strategy was to first PCI the mid LAD and circumflex arteries and then tackle the left main stem bifurcation using a DK crush technique. On the table, the patient had further chest pain with an ischemic trace on the monitor and we decided to put in an intraortic balloon pump up front which helped stabilize the ECG. This gentleman has a very calcified vascular tree just showing the aorta on the right-hand panel while we were advancing the intraortic balloon bump up. So we managed to wire into the LAD and the circumflex arteries without using any contrast. And then the first thing we did is we ballooned across the left main stem to relieve some of that ischemia and also to allow us to advance the IVAS catheter downstream. Following this, we did an IVAS run from the LAD and this shows a significant plaque burden in the mid and proximal LAD. The calcification is eccentric and is a less than 180 degree arc and therefore we decided to proceed without having to use upfront rotational atherectomy. We then performed a, an IVAS run in the circumflex artery and again this shows a heavy plaque burden in the proximal uh, circumflex artery all the way up to the ostium and into the distal left main. So as per, per our original plan, we went ahead and prepared and stented the uh, mid LAD and uh, circumflex arteries. And then comes the big challenge of performing an entire DK crush procedure on the left main bifurcation without using any contrast. Now everyone will be uh, aware of the DK crush uh, steps, but uh, in terms of uh, specifics in relation to an ultra low contrast DK crush, uh, the challenge of um, uh, positioning the side branch stent was uh, overcome by using three pieces of information that we had. Firstly, we had information from the IVAS co-registration. Secondly, we've got the wire in the left main into the LAD. And thirdly, we've got calcium in the distal left main stem for guidance. And using these three pieces of information, we positioned the circumflex stent with one to two millimeters protruding into the left main. And once we were satisfied with the position, the stent was deployed and then crushed with a 4-0 balloon. Following this, we rewired into the circumflex artery. Unfortunately, we did not capture the rewiring, but again, this was done without any contrast. And then we performed kissing balloon inflation with 4-0 balloons in each limb. The next big challenge in this uh, ultra-low contrast DK crush case is positioning the LAD to left main stem 
to ensure that the left main stem ostium is covered. And to do this, we used a, a floating wire technique. And all of, uh, most of you will be aware of this technique, but just in brief, uh, we position a wire uh, in the aorta, and uh, this prevents the guide from engaging deeply into the left main stem. Uh, then with gentle forward traction on the guide, uh, this uh, ensures that the guide is right up to the ostium. We position the stent uh, up to the tip of the guide, which ensures that the stent covers the ostium of the left main without excessive protrusion into the aorta. Using this technique, we deployed a 4 by 28 Zion stent from the ostium of the left main into the LAD. Following this, we performed a pot with a 5 balloon at high pressures and then rewired into the circumflex artery, following which we did sequential balloon inflations and then a kissing balloon inflation with 4 balloons in each limb. And finally, we ended the procedure with a pot with a 5 balloon at high pressure. Next, we performed an IVAS run, and this is the IVAS run uh, through the circ, which shows good stent expansion all the way, uh, showing clearance of the struts at the bifurcation and good stent expansion in the left main stem as well. Here we've got uh, several snapshots uh, in the LAD, all showing uh, acceptable stent expansion in the LAD with good MSA. There was some eccentric expansion in certain areas. This was due to the eccentric calcification, but again, acceptable MSA in those areas as well. This shows the left main stent expansion, uh, showing an excellent MSA. And this shows clearance of the stent struts at the bifurcation. We've got a couple of frames here, one from the distal edge in the circumflex stent showing a less than 50% plaque burden, and this one in the LED showing, again, a less than 50% plaque burden. At this stage, we were satisfied that we had completed the procedure, and the question really is, do we need to do a coronary angiogram at all? So far, we have not used any contrast at all in this entire procedure. However, our current practice is that we usually do a small contrast injection right at the end to document the angiographic final result. However, our patient was completely stable at this stage and in the future, we might change this practice to not perform a contrast angiogram at all. But here it is, the final angiographic image that we took with four mils of contrast. This is the only contrast we used in the entire procedure, which shows good flow down both the LAD and circumflex arteries The patient went home day three post PCI, no worsening of renal function. He started to drive a month later and he's back to his independent life. In fact, I spoke to him two days ago and he informs me that he's doing very well and has not had any further chest pain. And he is awaiting a repeat echo, which unfortunately will be delayed for a bit. With regards to ultra low contrast PCI, it's a very feasible option in patients with severe renal impairment who previously would have been considered to have prohibitive PCI risk. It's uh, possible to do highly complex ultra-low contrast PCI uh, in this group of patients, both in terms of anatomical complexity and in terms of uh, patient's comorbid status. And I think increased adaptation of uh, ultra-low contrast PCI will result in better treatment for this underserved group of patients. Uh, at the Lancashire Cardiac Center in Blackpool, we've done a series of such cases, including a DK crush of the left main, rotablation of the left main, and DK crush with severe LV systolic dysfunction. Uh, we've done multi-vessel uh, um, ultra-low contrast PCI as well. And it's a team effort. We've got a small group of uh, interventionists who have a special interest in ultra-low contrast PCI, and we're slowly building up our program and our numbers. So with that, I would like to thank the chairman and the audience uh, for your time and again for the invitation. Thank you.